Hi, this is Vicki Zilf with Cornell, and I have come to share a dream with you. That is a remake of a dream I had on 8-28-23. I had this dream at 4-23 a.m., 5-17 a.m., and 7-13 a.m. <clears throat> Excuse me. And I'm having to do this remake under the leading of the Holy Spirit to make sure all elements are removed that God does not want inside the video. Excuse me. Thank you, Jesus. So, you know, I've been praying a lot, using my voice a lot in prayer, but it's all good. God is good and He is faithful. Before we start, I want to pray. Um, again, this is um, called Luke 8 17 and the Fallen One, the Fallen Angel Dream. And when you can understand that fallen angels can change their shape, change their size, be tall, be small, um, we know that Gabriel appeared to Mary in one size, but in um, Luke, not Luke, Revelation, when talking about the seven thunders, it talks about the angel putting one foot on the land and one foot on the sea. So they can become very large, but it's Revelation, you can look it up, around the seven thunders. <clears throat> All right, so with the Lord's help, we're going to get through this dream, and I pray for the anointing. Let's please pray and take everything that I say to the Lord Jesus. Don't Don't just take my word for it. Seek the Lord for the truth. And understand this, when the angels fell, angels, there was more than one, and yes, they're bound, but as the end time comes, they're being released, and a lot of them are reserved under darkness. When you do a study of darkness and go back to Genesis, what darkness is, your understanding can be open to what exactly that means. But seek the Lord on that, and um, let's pray. Father God, in Jesus Christ's name, I come before you, standing on John 14, 13 through 14, which says, if I ask anything in your name, it will glor you will do it, and it will glorify the Father. I ask anything in your name, you will do it. That's in my, my words of how it's written. I place this under the barrier of invisibility and stealth in Jesus Christ's name, with invoking the no retaliation, no interference, and no backlash clause that I, I read every morning that I put in program into the morning each day as the Lord leads, how he leads it each day. And Father, in Jesus Christ's name, I bind the spirit of retaliation, interference, and backlash themselves and all their sub-demons in Jesus Christ's name. Now I ask that you touch my throat, Lord. I have been praying a lot, and I do not accept anything but divine health in Jesus Christ's name. So I stand on your word that says, being good health even as your soul prospereth. And my soul's prospering in Jesus Christ. So it can be no other way because that is your written word. Now in the name of Jesus, Holy Spirit, lead this prayer. I place this all under the blood of Jesus. This ministry, every site we're on, every person that reads their, their equipment, that reads or sees when they access the sites and such like. My family, Father, under your blood. The blood of Jesus sealing us in it. And then I remove all traps, triggers, bombs, booby traps, and such like in all existence known to God. Because Daddy God, Father God, you exist everywhere. And you know exactly where they're at. And I am so grateful for that. Now I deprogram any charms and such like that would be sent out, that that's set on. And even the people that would come to the YouTube videos or rumbles or wherever. Father, in Jesus Christ's name. I deprogram all charms in advance and such like dismantling, excuse me, dismantling all demons, canceling all their assignments in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. It is the name of Jesus Christ where the power lies. And then I cancel them, Lord. I cancel the assignments and I send them to the abyss as I did earlier in Jesus Christ's name. Now, Father God, take this on the wind of the Holy Spirit in every direction it needs to go. And I ask that you hide this video until it's need to be seen by the enemy. Father God, if it needs to be seen, give us understanding and open our eyes to watch really out there and what's really going on, Father. The enemy has hid in plain sight for so long while the church has mostly been asleep. Help us to get battle ready, Father God, and help us to be bride ready. In Jesus Christ's name I pray and let your perfect will be done on earth as it is in heaven. I give you praise, Jesus, lover of my soul. 
my spiritual husband, my Savior, my Redeemer, my God and King, I worship you and I give you all praise. In Jesus' name, amen. All right, again, I had this dream 828 23, 423, 517, and 731. Today is 10 23, so I, again, I am making or doing a remake. I dreamed the same dream again, my lovely Jesus, of a fallen angel walking in the woods somewhere with his demon like dog walking beside him. Jesus, this is a 2 Corinthians 13 1 dream which says, In the mouth of two or three witnesses shall every word be established. So, sweet Holy Spirit, please bring it all back into my mind's eye and let me record it in this journal. Then help me to gain the full understanding in Jesus Christ's name of what Father God is showing me and what part, if any, that I need to do. Excuse me. Is it begin... In a thickly covered forest area, I could tell the sun was still shining by the lightness of the day that somehow managed to lighten this forest thicket I am seeing. I heard the sound of falling footsteps upon the forest ground. They are making a light crunching sound upon the ground, um, ground caused, I know, by the twigs, sticks, and brown pine needles that are covering this area of the forest. Yet at the same time, each footstep sounds like it has a booming impact upon the earth's soil. Excuse me. Thank you, Holy Spirit. Thank you, Jesus. I turn to the sound of the noise to see a lone figure of a man emerging into this open area of the forest so heavily covered from the tree branches above his head. This figure is massive in size very tall in comparison to the size of the rocks and trees in this area. This man is wearing a dark green cape that reaches to his feet. As he emerges more into the opening, I see it's more like a cloak instead of a cape. The cloak has a hood that is now covering most of the, this lone figure's face. He has a wooden staff or walking stick in his right hand that has a bend or crook in it near the top of its otherwise almost straight form. Sorry. Even though it looks like a walking stick, when I see it, I hear wizard's staff. I heard more noises and I see and I saw emerging from the darkness of the forest out of this lighted thicket a, a <sighs> Excuse me, light it thicket, a very pale, very ugly, very horrifying dog-like creature. But it's not like any kind I have ever seen before that I can recall for myself. <clears throat> Excuse me. It is a grayish color, even almost white. It's huge, it's tall, it's hairless, it's skinny looking, yet I know somehow in this dream it possesses great strength in its sickly, diseased-looking body. I am praying to myself, covering myself in the precious blood of my lovely Jesus, Jesus Christ, but also daring not to say anything out loud in case it's possible for these things, the cloaked man and devil dog, this hound, evil hound, to see or hear me. I heard my lovely Jesus say softly in a whisper, It's okay. I've got you. Now watch and listen little daughter, and behold the fallen one who has been your enemy since your conception in your mother's womb, who has been sent to destroy not only you, but your seeds of promise, your children and their children. I heard myself let out a small gasp. I will, Jesus, I said, then continued, but I can't do this on my own. Please help me. I am, little one. You are covered in my blood no harm shall come to you now look watch and listen to all you are shown yes my love I heard myself respond back softly in my mind's eye apologize for the dogs <laughs> Lord we plead your blood over this and seal this in the name of Jesus 
My eyes are drawn back to the cloak figure, and I watch as he pushes back the hood of his cloak from his face. I notice that his hand is a very pale color that resembles somewhat of that of his demon dog, or hound, it may be called by some. His face is drawn up as if it is of great age. It's not wrinkles, yet his face has the appearance of great age. Ancient is a word I heard as I looked at this monster of a man. It's around the mouth and the eyes where the flesh looks like it's drawing in around these, these face features. Yet the sickly colored looking skin appears smooth looking. His eyebrows are black, but his hair is white. It seems to hold no semblance of order to the wildness of it upon his head. Excuse me. My ears are just <laughs> Praise the Lord. His nose is wide with nostrils that flare out when he takes it in a breath, protruding out of the inner nose bone. Looks like a baby femur leg bone. It looks unbroken, so I'm not sure how he managed to put it in his nose without one end being broken, but it is not. When I look at his eye area of his face, at first I saw empty sockets filled with blackness that chilled my spine. It's evil. If this man thing has a soul, then it's not like mine. I feel because this is black with a void that is that uh, that's of evidence where its eyeball should be. As I'm watching, I see as eyeballs begin forming inside these holes of evil, wicked darkness. I saw the whiteness of the eyeball as the eyes are forming, but it's only the outer part. The inner part, where a normal eye, iris, and pupil would be, is solid black. A deep blackness that I know is filled with pure evil. Now within them I see malignant hatred and loathing. He takes off his cloak in a quick, sweeping, angry moment and casts it to the ground. It hits with a thudding sound which made me realize it is made of a heavy type material after throwing the staff-like rod to the ground beforehand. All these actions I perceived were done in cruel hatred and I feel it's directed at me. Excuse me. Thank you, Lord. Can he see me? Thank you, Jesus. Does he know I'm here, Jesus? Stay still in me, little daughter. Stand strong. I've got you, but you must continue to watch, look, and listen to all I show you this night, which is now your day, Jesus said. Yes, my love, I say my mind's my mind, and again turn to observe the angry giant of a man. I saw now that he is dressed in a green tunic type overshirt with a wide two-inch trim of silver gray that adorns the edges of its square hem. He had matching green pants, solid in their color with a long sleeve undershirt of the same color of silver gray that's on the tunic's edges. Upon his head and shoulders is a covering that has a look of what knights would wear under their armor, and now his white hair I can no longer see. It's all tucked inside this head and shoulder covering. I have the sense or feel it's some type of chain mail unknown to man that is spiritually enhanced to protect his head, more importantly his mind and thoughts, as well as his chest and heart area from any attacks. It went to where his arms begin their, mo their movement and left them unhindered in moving. After throwing down the staff-like stick, the wizard staff I keep hearing, I knew this man had the power of ancient magic. It seemed to flow from him. He is a fallen one, a fallen angel that fell from heaven and now is evil. I know this. Why am I seeing this? I asked Jesus to myself, careful not to speak out loud. The fallen angel turned and looked me straight in the eyes. They filled with pure hatred and malice as his face and mouth contorted and twisted 
in a very unnatural way for a human person. I was stunned to know that he saw me and knew I was observing him. Excuse me. Thank you, Jesus. Help me, Lord. He screamed out in a horrible screeching voice that made me recoil from all the evil and hatred I heard within it. Because you have prayed for all the hidden things to be revealed in unwavering faith in the Lamb of God's name, he spat out, and I could physically see his words go out from him that were drenched somehow in saliva and venom. But as they almost reached me, I watched as they came in contact with an invisible barrier of light. Excuse me, an invisible barrier. I hadn't seen myself until that moment. The venom-drenched words crumbled, then evaporated upon the ground, causing a burning acid-like effect on the pine needles and twigs that seemed to melt and sizzle. Slight traces of vapor and smoke arose from the spots where they had fallen. It seemed to enrage him even further that his words couldn't get to me. I'm stunned by all I'm seeing and hearing. Luke 8, 17! Luke 8, 17, he screamed in rage. You had continually prayed. Now the God of heaven said, I have to reveal myself to you and others since you have uncovered me by the power of the written word. It's a written word of God. Which me do you want to see next? He sneered in maliciousness and he clenched and he changed into the form of a man I have known for a very long time. My stomach lurched inside me and the following began to laugh until I felt a hand, a gentle hand of peace touch me upon my right shoulder. I felt love, peace and strength begin falling, excuse me, begin filling my my began feeling my body. The shock of him turning into a man I knew had caused me to become weak in my fleshly body, in addition to the feeling of wanting to vomit. Excuse me. Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. I looked over quickly to see who it was, <clears throat> yet knowing all the time it was my lovely, lovely Jesus. And it was. He's standing close beside me, his left nail-pierced hand upon my shoulder. He's in a beautiful, loose, spotless, white robe-like tunic of holiness. That's the only way I know how to describe it in human words. Jesus' eyes are full of love and compassion for me. But as he turns toward the fallen angel, taunting me with the deception he had played in my life, Jesus' eyes filled with firm authority. He spoke with a voice that echoed through the whole forest, it seemed. That's enough. Excuse me. Something bit me. Hallelujah. That's enough. Praise the Lord. Life has to exist. <laughs> That's enough. Now show her your final form so she knows them all. Show her how you were once created. Jesus said firmly while his hand still rested protectively upon my shoulder. Filling me with comfort and his love for me. I had thought the hatred this fallen one had shown me was its deepest level. I was wrong. I can see his hatred for my lovely Jesus is so much deeper than his love for me. Yet this brings me no comfort in this knowledge. All right, the fallen one spat out, slinging saliva and venom from his mouth once again. I see now he has a serpent-like forked tongue as he is speaking. Now, Jesus commanded. The fallen angel, the fallen one yelled, Ugh! Then changed his appearance to that of a beautiful looking man. He has dark hair that somehow has a golden sparkling effect within it. He is fair skinned and his eyes are the color of light brown. <clears throat> Excuse me. His skin is flawless, and I am drawn to his beauty, yet my spirit feels repelled by it somehow at the same time. 
He is dressed in a flowing garment of white and palest blue. I watch as wings begin expanding and unfolding from his back. The span of them is so wide, and they are so beautiful. Oh, I said, not knowing what else to say, by all I am seeing. Then suddenly, he turned back into the first form I had seen him as. What happened, Jesus? Why did he change back so suddenly? Excuse me. Little daughter, you have learned many things in this world. Thank you, Lord. That few would dare to try to comprehend. I know critters out here. Praise the Lord. Little daughter, you have learned many things in this world that few would dare to try to comprehend. The fallen ones can no longer maintain the original form of holy angel they were that they were created in for long periods of your time anymore. The evilness of sin overshadows and overcomes this form after a period of time. But even in this small amount of time, they will use this form to appear as to my creation of people to appear as angels of light. To deceive all they can, he said to me softly. I looked over at the fallen one with his pale, sullen-colored skin and hate-filled eyes that was, defiant, that was glaring at us. He was standing almost defiantly as if daring my lovely Jesus to have him do more. Jesus smiled and said again in great authority, Not today, Talamar. Only what is written in the hidden things have you been made to reveal. She now sees you for who you really are. Deception's veil has been replaced by spiritual, holy sight of truth. Not only for her, but many others involved. You have lost this war. My witness stands firm in me. Go tell the others you have failed in your destruction of her life and that of her family. Your chances are now removed permanently from you. Know this, the very children she was given became purified and holy the moment my blood coursed through the baby's veins. Her seed, her righteous seed, in me and through me, shall destroy you. They shall plow through your kingdom and that of Satan's like no other have before. My witnesses, my 144,000, are on the move. Go tell that old serpent too you've lost and my feet have touched down for the marching of my heavenly, hallelujah, my heavenly warriors of light. Almost instantly, the fallen angel and his now not so scary demon hound were in a flash gone. Tears had filled my eyes at my love's words. I am nothing without him. I love him so much. He turns to me and takes both my hands in his. He looks me directly in his in the eyes with his with so much love. I become weak with the force of it entering me. I begin crying more. Jesus, oh how I love you. Vicky, I love you too, my warrior bride and witness. The time has come for you to leave this life behind and to walk where I have called you to walk in the fullness of me. It's time to go. Come, take my hand. It's going home time. I reach up and wipe the tears of joy and love from my eyes. He extends his right hand to me. I look at it almost in awe, then grab it firmly. Let's go, I heard myself say. And then I awoke. Three times in one night, morning, I dreamed the same dream. Three times. This dream is established in you, Jesus, and in heaven. Here are the verses. Hebrews 13, 2. Hebrews 4, 12 through 13. Hosea 12, 10. Matthew 24, 37 through 39. Ecclesiastes 1, 9. 2 Corinthians 11, 12, 15. And then 2 Corinthians 13.1 I ask that you please take all these things to Jesus 
in prayer. We have an enemy out there that's very that that is very good at what he does. Deception, deception, deceive. What what, what greater way to deceive the world than to let them think? You know that there's not as many out there. But with all it said, remember the name of Jesus Christ is a name above all others. You know, in, in Philippians 2, it talks about Jesus has been given a name, highly exalted. But if you go back further up in the verse, you're going to see it says Christ. Christ. Jesus Christ. The power is found in the name of Jesus Christ or Christ Jesus. Jesus Christ, Christ Jesus. The, the Holy One, the Anointed One, Yeshua. Jesus Christ. All power is found in that name. Praise God. He has done everything for us that we need to live a victorious life in Him, through Him, by Him, and by His Word. Now, I, I say this again many times. Don't leave home without your Word. This is your sword. Don't leave home without it. Alright, with that being said, if you don't know Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior, I'm praying and asking that you accept Him today into your heart. Say this little prayer with me. Jesus, forgive me of all my sins. I ask you to come into my heart and change my life. Make me new, a new creation in you. I believe and confess that Jesus Christ is the Son of God. He came in the flesh by virgin birth. Jesus was whipped and beat for my life for healing. But he rose again victorious when he gave his life on Calvary. I accept you this day and confess you as Lord and Savior of my life before God and man. And it's that simple. It's that simple because it's through grace. It's through mercy and love that Jesus Christ did everything you needed for you to be saved. That was needed for this world to be saved. John 3, 16, for God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son, who went willingly, that whosoever believeth on him shall not perish, but have everlasting life. John 3, 16. So if you accepted Jesus Christ into your life, I ask that you please if you don't have a Bible, get you a Bible. Again, I prefer the KJV. But you pray and ask the Holy Spirit to lead you. Which Bible to read? Because I'm understanding that the Holy Spirit, if the Bible is of truth, whatever truth is in there of God, He can pull out. And He can teach you too because the Word is forever settled in heaven. Jesus Christ is the Word made in the flesh. He's the original. He's in heaven. We get taught through that, but we do it also by reading this word. That's why it's good to let Holy Spirit teach you and not always lean on man. Now, there are good teachers out there. There's good preachers out there when you can find them. And the Holy Spirit leads you to the correct one. So I would recommend if you've never read the Bible to start in John. Matthew, Mark, Luke, John in the New Testament and get to know your Savior. And if you're going through periods of like depression or things like that, go to the Psalms. David was a man after God's own heart. Even though he sinned, he was redeemed. He was forgiven. He repented. But you can see even in the difficult times how he praised and rejoiced in the Lord. We need to encourage ourselves in the Lord Jesus Christ like he did. Everything we need, we've already been provided for. All right. If you want to contact me, um, I can be reached at the pray.856 myjesus at gmail.com or on www.mylovelyjesusministry.com there's also a link there where you can send a, a prayer, prayer email, prayer request if you want to let us know let me know that you have accepted Jesus as your Savior I would love to hear from you um, I have created on the website a page called 
the word of our testimony. That is going to be for testimonies that come in as the Lord leads. I will post them as I can. So if I'm overwhelmed, just know I will get them. Prayer request comes first and foremost. That that the, the need, the, the prayer, coming together and praying. Um, I have placed one testimony to give an example about however the Lord leads. A testimony of what Jesus Christ has done for you. How he's moved for you. And let's encourage one another through Jesus Christ. Um, you can send those through the prayer email, but please put like test on you something at the top so I'll understand what it is. And I, and I appreciate that and thank you. Um, our mailing address is My Lovely Jesus Ministry, P.O. Box 5133, Cleveland, Tennessee 37320. Um, I'm I'm the one, me and my son is the one that checks the, the mail. It, so it will come directly to me. And just remember in all things that God is good. I encourage you to seek the Lord. Seek Him while He can still be found. Today is the day of salvation. And it's through grace that you're saved. And not by anything we do except believe all right lord is there anything else you want me to mention all right we're good to go all right stay under the blood for those of you that says what does that mean stay under the blood i still get questions on that that means stay as close to jesus as you can be in his will so that his blood forever protects you i plead the blood and ask for a blood covering over me like a shield in jesus christ's name Stay under the blood. Stay under the shadow of his wings. Psalms 91.9 Alright, God bless. Remember, Jesus is Lord. Jesus came in the flesh. And Jesus is returning. Oh, yes, he is. Bye-bye for now.